What's going on you guys? My name is Zach Hartley and welcome to my channel. Today we are talking about the MACD indicator. We're going to go over exactly what it is, how you can use it in your trading and my tips and tricks for what I do when I'm swing trading and day trading. So let's get right into it. Okay, so real quick, if you guys are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. My only mission here is to help you make more money by having the information and strategies you need to profit a little bit more on your day trades and swing trades. So today, let's go over the MACD. MACD stands for Moving Average Convergence Divergence. It is a technical indicator that is used to identify buy and sell points by looking at the changes in momentum. So what we're doing is we're basically putting together a formula that's gonna calculate a visual display for us to help us identify changes in momentum and where we may wanna buy and sell the stock. So moving average, this is the first part of it, MA, moving average. It is basically an average of a certain number of periods. So if you're gonna take a simple average, you would say, let's say there's five closing prices over the last five days. You'd basically add those up, divide them by five, and that would be your simple moving average. Pretty, pretty easy concept. Now, with the MACD, we use something that's called an exponential moving average. And all it means is that we're gonna put more weight on the most recent days. So if we did a five-day exponential moving average, the last day that just happened would have a little bit more weight than the first day that happened. And that gives us a, just a little bit more accurate picture as to what's going on right now. So the moving average is the average across a certain period of days. We use an exponential moving average so that it's more heavily weighted on the re most recent days. And when we look at the MACD, we are looking at two moving averages. One is called a faster moving average, which would be that shorter time period, maybe five periods. And then another one would be the longer moving average or the slower moving average. And that would just be a longer set of periods. So maybe 10, 15, 20 periods. And that would be an exponential moving average. And so as you can see, one of them would move very very fast because it would be adjusting to the price very rapidly. The other one would have 20 periods that it's averaging out so it would move a little bit slower and that's why we call it the slower moving average. Now the other side of this is the C and the D, MACD. So the C and the D stand for convergence and divergence. What convergence means is come together and divergence means come move apart. So basically what we're doing here is we're using the MACD to see if those moving averages are coming together or going apart and what direction they're going in. The MACD is a representation of the EMA's exponential moving averages relationships to each other. So that's what we're looking at here. Now let's start talking about the chart. So this is Apple Inc. over basically the last kind of six months. So we're looking at the beginning of 2020 up until June. And as you can see here, we've got some pretty strong price movement. We're coming in on the left hand side. I'm going to use my mouse here. We're in around 280. We peak up to about 320 and then we drop all the way down to 220 and we come back up to 352. On the bottom here, you can see the MACD. So this is what the indicator actually looks like. The red line here is the slow moving average. As you can see, it's a fairly steady line. It doesn't have much jagged peaks or anything to it. And the black line here is the faster exponential moving average. And as you can see, especially in this March to April period, it's got a couple of more jagged peaks here. That's because it's a faster moving average. It's taking the average of a fewer number of days previous to where you're at right now. And therefore, it is moving more aggressively with the price compared to the slower moving average. Now this blue histogram here, this line that you can see sort of running through the middle, what this does is it shows you the difference between the moving averages. So if you look at March 23rd right here, you can see there's a big gap between the slow moving average, the red one here, and the faster moving average, this black one down below. Therefore, you have a fairly large histogram bar, this blue bar right here. As you go over forward two, three, four days, you can see that they almost meet and therefore these histogram bars get slower or lower and lower and lower. And then when the black line crosses over the red line, the histogram actually goes positive and it grows and grows and grows as the gap between the slow moving average and the fast moving average grows. The histogram bars grow with it and they shrink with it as well. And so that's, that's what we're looking at on this chart. Now the real question is how do you read this? Well, 
here's how you read it. So what we're looking for is signals for buy and sell. And those signals come when the fast exponential moving average crosses above or below the slow exponential moving average. It means that we have a change in trend. So what's happening here is let's say that Apple is just consistently going downwards for the last six months. Well, the slower moving average is going to keep going like this and the faster moving average is going to keep going like this. Nothing's really happening. Those lines aren't going to really change in their direction because Apple's just consistently going down. However, if Apple goes down and then starts to correct itself and go up, what's going to happen is that slower moving average is going to stay kind of going like this. And then that faster moving average is going to interact with the price is going to follow the price upwards. And those two lines are going to cross. And when that crosses, that means that we have a change in the trend. It happens on the upside and it happens on the downside. But what's happening there is the faster moving average is going to cross above the slower moving average because it is reacting to the price more quickly because it's only looking at such a shorter period of time in comparison. So this is where we get our buy signal. Now, if we look at this chart, you can see that the fast exponential moving average, this black line here, crosses above the slow moving average, the red line right here at the end of March. I've circled it in the big green arrow here. You can basically see the black line cross above the red line. You can see the histogram turn from negative to positive, and you can see it basically start to move in an upward direction. This would be a buy signal when the black line crosses above the red line. Now, let's look at the chart and see what actually happened with the price. So this is Apple from the same period we just looked at. Obviously, you can tell the MACD crossed over at the end of March here. And if you had bought the stock at the end of March here, you would have bought in around $250. You would add a tiny, small little dip right here. And then you could have wrote it out all the way up to $350 on this chart. And today, April or August 11th, Apple shares are worth $437.50. This has actually continued all the way up. And therefore, you could have gone from about $250 up to $437 basically by just reading the MACD buy signal right here. Now, what's nice is this was a very clear crossover. It was a very clear, direct black crossing over the red. As you can see later on, it's sort of basically intertwined with the red line here. This is showing us not quite as clear of a signal, whereas this signal right here where we had a sharp crossover, that's a very, very clear, strong buy signal. And those are the type of buy signals that you want and that you're looking for when you're using the MACD. Now, sell signals. So it's the exact opposite. The idea here is when the fast exponential moving averages, or the black line in our case, crosses below the slow exponential moving average, what it means is that the price is changing, the exponential moving average is crossing over the slower moving average, and therefore we have a change in trend. Here is an example of when this has happened. So as you can see, the moving averages are almost intertwined all the way going up to December. Then we have a bit of a gap here between the black and the red line. As you can see by the histogram, it's continuously moving up until the middle of December. And then we have a very clear crossover of the fast moving average over the slow moving average in a downward trend in a downward direction. So what that is, is a sell signal. It's the exact opposite of the buy signal. It's basically the fast moving average crossing down below the slow moving average. And that is our sell signal. Now, I'll give you a second to just guess what chart this is. See if you can figure it out. Probably not. But so this was Bitcoin. So Bitcoin in December of 2018 was $19,000. It almost hit $20,000, but it was hovering around $19,000 almost for a three or four day period. And as you can see, right as that happened, the MACD crossed down below the slower moving average, the ex fast exponential moving average crossed below the slow moving average, which is our MACD sell signal. You can also see that the histogram right here went negative as well. And if you had sold out at this time period, you would have got out either on this day or this day. The worst case you would have got out on was let's say $16,000. And about a month and a half later, Bitcoin finished at below $7,000. So you would have saved yourself over a 50% loss if you had just seen this signal and picked up on it and sold your Bitcoin. You could have been one of those uh, Bitcoin millionaires bragging about it, but instead you held down to 7,000 because you missed the MACD signal. So that's okay. We're going to help you out.
All right, so this is one of my favorite companies here. This is Tesla, and as you can see, they're great for using the MACD. In the end of February here, the MACD crossed over, which gave us a sell signal, and then if you held off on that and bought back in when it gave us another buy signal, you could have saved yourself a 41.9% loss, or if you short sold the stock, you could have made that as a profit. If you had bought back in during that buy signal and then sold out again when it crossed over later on in July, which was gonna be another sell signal, you could have made a 69.3 profit on Tesla just by reading and understanding the MACD. So it is a great tool to use. The idea here is that it is going to show you a change in the momentum of a stock. That's what we are using it for and we're going to try and buy or sell the stock when that momentum changes so that we can get in. The best way to use the MACD though is when you couple it with support and resistance. So for instance, if we knew that there was support right at this 400 line, 450 line, and we could see that there was about to be a crossover of the MACD, that would be two signals that are about to line up for us per perfectly as a buy signal and it could have given us more strength and more confidence putting our position into Tesla. Now my tips and tricks for when I'm using the MACD. The big thing here is the sharper the cross, the stronger the move. So we saw a couple times where the, the two moving averages were kind of intermingled all the way across. That does not show us anything strong. It does not show us a signal or any strength. However, when they cross at an almost 90 degree angle, that is a super strong signal. That is super strong strength and that gives us more confidence when using the MACD. Secondly, look at look at it in the long term. You could see a couple of crossovers, you could see it here and there, but if you go back six months, two years, three years, four years, and you could see that the MACD was way more overstretched or overbought, well, maybe the signals you're, you're looking at right now aren't quite as strong. So that's something you should consider. Thirdly, the MACD is just a signal and it is not 100% guaranteed. As you can see from my examples, there were a couple of great signals that gave you some great returns. There were also a couple of signals in there that were not great returns. You would have missed it. It would have faked you out. And that's why you need to use the MACD and couple it with the rest of your technical analysis and say, okay, I have seven out of eight signals that are lining up as a buy. Now I feel really confident in it. You should not trade on just the MACD alone. It is not a good idea. Fourthly, use the momentum of the momentum. <laughs> the MACD, fourthly, the MACD is used to measure the momentum of the stock. It is used to measure the momentum and how strong the upward and downward pressure pressure is based on price action, and it is used to identify changes in the trend. It is not used for anything else. You cannot use it mystically or magically as the ultimate indicator. It is just a piece of the pie. It is a small little tool on your tool belt to help you make the best decisions. The nice thing about the MACD though is it can be used in any time frame. You can use it day trading, you can use it swing trading, you can use it long term investing. Whatever you want to do, you can just adjust the time period it's down and it will work for you in the exact same way. Now, my name is Zach Hartley. If you guys are interested or you got any value out of this video, please consider subscribing. My only goal is to help you make more money. If you're interested in learning more about the stock market options or personal finance, I have courses on Skillshare that you can register for free with the link in the, de in the description. And I just recently posted a video about Dan Blazarian and his ridiculous $3 million personal budget that he's taken out of his company that he's raising money from you for. So please watch out for that. And if you're interested in learning more, check out my last video. Thank you so much and I will talk to you later.